Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to work on a surface design for CATIA certification exam. Okay, and this is the uh, sample uh, exam that we have. It is basically giving you some uh, initial files, especially this one, surface.cat part, and then asking you to convert this kind of like the surface of a hair dryer so you have to go through several problems problems one to five as you can see and do some surface design so the first thing is says open this file and here i have opened this file from again the uh, exported zip folder that is provided by the uh, exam software and then it says uh, what you need to do is you first need to create this part, this surface, okay, which is a revolute surface. So you have to revolve this guy, okay, do a revolute surface, and uh, then measure the surface area of it in millimeter square so this part of it which is basically a multi-section right you don't mess up with this right now you just use the top curve and try to revolve it to create this top portion of the uh, hair dryer so if we go that's this curve here this guy okay and if you go under inputs here you have some geometric sets and uh, here is your input there are different sketches and then here also on the references you have some planes some intersections and so on there is also a line that is hidden here so it's this sketch this one this one this one and this one now here there is a hidden sketch if you want you can see it that's later for creating the holes on the back so let's hide it there is also this line that you have to use for the uh, rotation axis okay so you need this line number one in this case so we need to go to shape and generative shape design to create surfaces and what we need is to revolve this around that axis so we have to find revolving a surface and here if you go under the surface base and go under the extrude there is also the revolve so i click on the revolve says what is your profile you just choose a sketch one and you see the revolution axis by default is selected to be this guy and there we go okay and now if you want you can hide this back and if you don't want that one you can also hide it okay so first you created this and now you need to do some measurements so you go under measure item and you click on uh, this revolve and it gives you the surface area which is uh, 1090.87 okay and uh, if you look it's this one okay so the correct answer is C and you can check it at the end as well okay then here you have a multi-section surface which passes through these three circles and this is basically the guide curve right so it says create a multi-section using sketches number three four and five use points three four and five respectively as the closing points and use sketch number two as the spine and then you will get this surface and now when you get it now you need to get rid of this extra portion of this handle and create a hole on the head okay so you need to trim both of the surfaces get rid of this extra part that is extending inside the head create the hole and then you need to uh, join them together and apply a, a fillet radius of two mils and then measure the surface area of the whole thing okay so first thing first is we have to do a multi-section 
right and as you know this is the fill this is the multi section correct and this is the blend so most of the tools you want are here so we go to multi section and for uh the guide i choose this one this one and this one make sure the closing points are the points that are given to you if you look at the moment you have to make sure that they are the closing points and as you can see if I zoom into one of them you see this point in black is different than the closing point so you have to edit that otherwise you're gonna get a twist so you can right click here on this and say I want to replace it with this black point there we go as simple as that then go on the next curve, do a similar thing, right click, replace, get that point, and then go to the next one. And again, right click, replace, and click on that one. Okay, so that's the first step is to uh, get the closing points right. Then you go under spine and then choose this guy as the spine and look at the preview. And there we go. You got the handle and you see clearly if you look here, it should extend inside the head. Now, whatever sketch that you don't want anymore, you can just hide them. Correct. So make sure you hide whatever that is on the way of you visualize it so here we go i got this right and before anything else i go ahead and save this okay and now i need to do some trimming so as you can see here again i should get rid of this portion and this hole and if you want to see better you might be willing to change the color of one of these so go to properties graphics and then change the color to maybe something else that you can see better okay that they are not the same surface so now we need to do the trimming and if you go under here this operation there is the split and there is the trim right so if you click on the trimming it says you need to trim what so you choose this one and you choose this one and you see it gives you exactly what you want right it get rid of the parts you didn't want and made the whole if anything is different from what you want you can click on this other side next element other side previous element and you can keep different things like this you see so change it to exactly reflect what you want and then okay that so now they are one piece uh, they are not still one piece but they are trimmed properly and now what i want to do is to join them together so i click on join and say uh, well uh, you don't need to join it of course because it's just one element it's considered the whole thing to be one trim so you don't need to join it anymore you just need to go and try to apply a, a fillet radius which is here and uh it is this area let's see okay no that's not what we want let's see if we can do the edge fillet choose this edge and use two mil and there we go so now it's all one single thing and I can measure its area. It's 1329.1. So that's the number and that's what you can see here. Okay, so you got it right. Then after making this, now you need to go with one of those hidden sketches which is sketch number six and also that line one that we use for the uh, axis of revolution and then you want to project that sketch along that line onto the surface to get this curve here right 
and uh, it says what is the length of the projected curve so you have to go and measure the uh, circumference of this projected curve and tell us how many millimeters it is okay so project this sketch along that line to get this guy and measure its circumference or perimeter actually in this case so uh, let's go ahead and do that so again we come back here that's sketch number six we unhide it and then this one also and now we have to do projections so you have to find the projection and you see this is the projection right so you click on projection what is the sketch this one what is the support this one and uh is it normal to you no know, along the direction and the direction is determined by this line and boom that's what you want now you have to go and measure the length of that so now I click on it and the length is 7.85 mils, 7.85 or 84 if you uh, basically truncate it, not round it, 7.84 seems like the numbers here are mostly truncated. Okay, so that's the third part. Now that you got that, it wants you to cut it out and then do a circular pattern, 10 equally space of them. And then measure the surface area again of the new thing. So as the problem says, uh, when I project it, first I pattern this projection. I don't cut. So I uh, got rid of this uh, split I did. I got rid of that hole. First I do the projection. Then I repeat the projection, do a circular pattern. Then with all of that pattern, I do the uh, split. So first thing is I choose this guy and I go to the circular pattern and I choose 10 of them with angle 36 degrees equally spaced, right? And my reference element is this guy. So here we go. I got the 10 of them. Now I try to use this 10 to split that surface and create the holes. So now I choose this and, um, or actually I choose this and then go to split and for splitting elements I choose the circular pattern and that original one and I okay that and there we go I got all the things that I wanted and this is what you have now says measure the surface area again so here we go click on this and the surface area is 1308 right which is this one so i got that covered the last part is um, as you can see it says what is the maximum radius of curvature in this sketch number one right so in that original one you revolved you want to measure the radius of curvature and see where along this curve you have maximum radius of curvature which is basically the area that is closer to a flat line and measure that and give it and the answer should be 8268 so now uh, again you need to measure the radius of curvature uh, maximum on this curve and it should be in this area which is closer to a flat line and to measure that um, we cannot use this measure tool it's not going to be accurate because if you do and click on this portion if you click on this portion it is with radius of seven it is actually a curve but this other portion of it is not really a curve and so the number it gives you could be misleading so here, if you click on that, it gives you 80.9, which is close to this, but not exactly. And the reason is this portion of this curve is not really a line. If you double click on it, you can see that this portion is an actual curve, a three point arc. This portion is an SP line and a SP line does not have a single radius of curvature. So that number is not accurate so for that you need the radius of uh, curvature tool which is under analysis toolbar 
and analysis toolbar is typically down here if you don't see it you right click and get it and there are some tools in it now this one is good but it gives you surface if you want it on a line you click on uh, this one which says uh, porcupine curvature analysis and then you click on the area that you want and then it shows it to you at different points along the line when you move your cursor you see as you go toward the ends on this end 82.19 is max on this end you go all the way to the max you see it's 82.68 which is this number okay so use that tool and this way you can answer the sample exam on surface design okay thank you so much i will see you in the next lecture